Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Jant4 video. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the new pre-release of Jant4 Bremstrelung. This is version 0.2.0 Alpha 1. So in this pre-release, we've added the ability to record the energy of each photon as it hits the detector. So just to demonstrate, here's the executable file, G4 Brems. We click on it. Now in the last release, it would shoot particles at this tungsten detector and it would create Bremstrelung and a bunch of photons would hit this detector. Now in this release, as those photons hit the detector, it's going to record the energy of each one and print it out on the right side here on the console. All right, let's start off the simulation. Do run, beam on 100. Awesome. So as you can see here on the right, for each particle that hit this detector, it prints out the energy energy deposited for this event and how much energy. So this is a pretty big step for G4 Bremstrelung because in the future, we're gonna have all this data saved and we're gonna display it on a graph, a histogram, or just have a bunch of data saved so that we can characterize this photon beam. For now, I'm not gonna to claim to say this is 100% accurate because I don't know. I'm assuming it's pretty accurate though because GNT4 is built for physics simulations, so it's probably gonna be accurate. And because we can see over here, we have any energies ranging from a couple keV to a couple MeV. And that's kind of what you would expect from Bremstrelung. So this seems pretty accurate, but in future releases, we're going to cross-reference it with different research that's been done to make sure this is actually accurate. All right, guys. So now that I've demonstrated the application, I'm going to go and walk through the code real quick. So in this release, we've introduced two new classes into G4 Brems. And if we open up include and source directories, we can see the two new classes are stepping action and event action. So before I go over and show you guys the code, I want to kind of explain what these things are in GAMP4. So if you're in GAMP4 and you want to start a simulation, you type the following command. You type run, beam on, and then how many events you want to do. So this argument represents how many events. So for our application in G4 Brems, we have the particle gun right here, we have the target, and we have the detector. So if I run this code, run beam on 100, what it's going to do is it's going to shoot 100 electrons out of here, out of the particle gun. So a run in Jamf4 represents when this has completed, when 100 events have completed, that's the end of the run. So an event in Jamf4, it can be different for different programs. For my case in G4Brems, I said one event is equal to one electron getting shot off. So just to demonstrate what one event would look like in Jamf4, I'm just going to run the code run beam on one. So this is going to execute one single event. So I'll run it, and here you see that one electron was shot off, and then it bounced out of the detector and bounced all around. But I can run that again, and as you can see, for each event, it's slightly different, but it's basically just one electron getting shot out. So now let's move on to the event action class. So this class is extended from the G4 user event action, and basically there's two methods for the developer to override. There's begin of event action and end of event action. So this first method gets called at the beginning of the event, or in my case, right before the electron gets shot. And then this one gets called at the end of the event or after the particle has undergone Bremstrelung and has gone off to wherever it goes to. So right now in G4 Brems, this is very basic. Basically, the only purpose of event action is to take in the energy if the particle happens to hit the detector and display it. So it doesn't really save the energy anywhere for now, but it's just proving that we can record that energy and then saving it will be a future problem. So that's why we have here the add energy method that I created. And then we have a member variable called F energy, which is gonna store the energy for that event. So as you can see here in the .cc file, we have at the beginning of event action, when it gets initialized, we just set the energy to zero. Then at the end of event action, if we have accumulated some energy during that particle's path, 
we're just going to print out that energy. And this takes advantage of the GNT4 best unit function, which is really nice because it will put a unit on the end so that we understand what's going on. Finally, at the bottom, we have a method called add energy. And I'm going to show you guys where this gets called. It actually gets called in stepping action. All right, guys. So before we go on to stepping action, I'm just going to try to explain how it works before we look into the code. So again, let's draw our particle gun and our detector. So because GM4 is a computer modeling software, it's not perfect. So it has to divide the particle's trajectory into steps. So let's say that we had some kind of magnetic field. This is not applicable to GM4 Bremsterlung necessarily, but let's say we have some kind of magnetic field um, that pulls electrons this way. Well, in reality, what would happen is you shoot off an electron and it would curve like that, right? So GM4 can't model a curve that smoothly. Instead, it's going to divide that particle's path into steps. So it's going to say, OK, this step, it went there, then there, then there, then there. And you kind of get this line that's kind of broken up into straight lines. Now, each of these little lines is called a step. And the nice thing about GM4 stepping action is you can save the information about one step. All right, guys, so going back to G4 Brems, I'm just going to do a run beam on one. And if I zoom in, you can see these yellow dots. These kind of represent steps that are happening. So like I was explaining, you see how it's like a straight line, and then it goes another straight line, another straight line. That's because the particle's trajectory is divided into these small steps. So as far as the stepping action class goes, it's derived from the G4 user stepping action class. And for the developer, there's only one thing you need to override, which is user stepping action. So this is going to be your own rules that are going to happen at each step. So for my stepping action class, I actually passed in a, a pointer to the event action into the constructor. And the reason I need to do this is because during the step, we're going to send some information into the event action class. So I needed to pass it into the constructor like this. And then we're going to save that event action into this variable called f event action. Okay, let's move on to the source file. So first things first, in the constructor of stepping action, we need to define our event action and our gamma detector. First of all, we got our gamma detector. And the way we get our gamma detector is actually pretty cool. So what we need to do is we need to get the G4 run manager. The run manager just takes care of all the logistics of the run. And we're going to get the user detector construction from the run manager. And we're going to get our gamma detector from our detector construction. So if I go over to detector construction, I made a new method that actually gets the gamma detector. It's actually in the header file. There we go. So I made this new function called get gamma detector that returns the gamma detector that square detector at the end that's supposed to catch all the photons. So this is a really cool method for getting things because you don't have to pass in a pointer to the detector construction or anything. You can kind of go like under the carpet and go through the run manager and find your detector construction. So this is defining our gamma detector. And then we down here define our event action. Um, if we pass in an event action to the constructor, we're going to set the event action member variable to that event action pointer. So at this point, you might be like, so John, why do you have to get the event action um, by passing it into the constructor? Why can't we get the event action in this same method kind of under the rug, um, asking the G4 run manager for our event action? Well, in reality, we could get the event action through this method. If we write this line of code, we write G4 run manager, get run manager. There is a method called get user event action. And this will give us our event action similar to this. The only caveat here, though, is that this is returning us a const variable. So since it's returning a const variable, it has to be read only which unfortunately isn't going to work for the event action. If you look down here, you'll see that with our gamma detector, we're just accessing some information about it. We're just reading, like, is this the volume that it is? So we're not modifying any data about the gamma detector. However, with the event action, 
we do need to kind of modify some data. We have to call this function called add energy, which modifies the energy variable of the event action. So this f event action cannot be a const variable. It has to be a variable that can be modified. Awesome. So now we have our gamma detector and our event action saved into our class. All right, guys, now we're going to go down to the user stepping action method, which is where the fun happens. So the goal of this method was to register the hit if the step is inside the tracking volume. So in other words, if the particle is inside the detector, we want to send the energy to the event action. So first of all, we're going to see in each step where the particle is. And that's what this block does right here. Now, we only care about the photon if it's inside the detector. So if the volume is not the gamma detector, we're just going to end it right there and return. Now, this block of code is unfinished, but basically I want to save the position of where it hit the detector. But let's say we made it this far. It means the particles inside the detector. We're going to add energy of that step. So we take the step and get the total energy deposit of that step. And then we're going to add the energy to the event action. So let's go back to the event action. And here's that method, add energy. So basically, every time the particle is inside the detector, it's going to be adding energy to the event action. And the energy deposited into the detector by that particle should equal the energy that particle had as it was hitting that detector. All right, guys, the last change that was made in this pre-release was to the action initialization class. Basically, we need to register the event action and the stepping action into this class in order for them to work properly. So basically, these two lines is where everything happens. We just set user action to our event action and our stepping action. And the only reason why we defined event action as a variable right here is because we needed that pointer to be passed to the stepping action class. So this pointer right here allows the stepping action to send information over to the event action. So if you want to play around yourself with uh, G4 Brems, this pre-release, you can go to this branch or this tag of my GitHub repository and go down to the bottom and you'll have to compile the source code yourself. Because so far I'm still working on making a Docker that contains the whole project in its own environment. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, any comments, or suggestions for improvements, please leave a comment down below. And again, I appreciate you guys supporting me in my videos and donating with those links down below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you later. Hey, guys. Welcome back to my channel. So on this Jant4 project, we're talking about the Git Gamma detector. That's the G4 step for today. Thank you for coming to my channel. Subscribe, buy me some coffee. Peace.